What is up, everybody, and welcome to another very special sneak peek. I am going to go ahead and start getting this box open while I talk to you guys about what is on the table today. Uh, so this is going to be a used knife. Um, and, you know, I buy knives from the secondary market pretty frequently. This particular one, however, has uh, a little bit more wear and tear than I usually go for. Um, particularly, there is a ding uh, towards the plunge grind. Um, I haven't really seen it yet. But, I mean, I've seen pictures. So, uh, we're going to find out together how bad it really is. But I got a pretty good price on it. Um, so, that seemed reasonable. Um, and if I haven't made it obvious from the title, this is going to be a Shirogorov. This is actually the first Shiro that I've owned. Um, I've had a bunch of them at this point on loan. Uh, I've tried out a Shiro Neon, a Ultralight, um, and then I've gotten to look at a couple of F95s. Got to check out an F3. Got to check out uh, two F3s, actually. Um, so, yeah, a bunch of, bunch of Shiro's have passed through, but uh, I've never owned one. So this is going to be interesting. So this is, a, this is an F95. Wow, man, this is a lot of packing. Uh, this is an F95, and it's in a particularly interesting um, uh, mill pattern, which I really liked. So let's go ahead and expose the knife here. So as you guys can see, uh, it's not entirely quote-unquote uncommon, um, but this is uh, one of the, the lesser common uh, mill patterns. So this is actual milling into the titanium. Uh, and this is a really nice blue. It's got this cool blue standoff, which I really like. Um, and I just, uh, I wanted something a little bit different. You know, I like the standard kind of F3 milling that kind of goes around like this and then up through here. Just like, uh, is it's kind of similar to the Neon. Um, but I wanted something a little bit different. And if I like this knife, I will probably get it anodized. Because I actually want to make this knife a user. Um, I don't really have any uh, sort of expensive knives that I really really like beat on um you know i typically keep my kershaws and stuff around for like you know tape and stuff you can see like there's lots of residue because i just I, I just don't like having to constantly clean the knife you know if uh if i have to th think about things like moisture and rust and and residue and all of that like i just prefer to leave all that crap on cheap knives and like when they get really bad i mean i Maybe I'll clean them. Maybe I give them away. Like whatever. Um, they're just kind of like whatever to me. You know, if I take my Thorburn um, and I cut through some tape, like I'm fine. I do that every week, but um, I feel like compelled to immediately go and like get all the gunk off and like clean it because it's this beautiful hand rub satin finish. And I just don't really want to mess that up. I don't like leaving residue or anything. I don't want anything to rust uh, by leaving moisture on it or anything like that. So. Typically, my users are a little bit on the cheaper side. They're below two or three hundred dollars, or in some cases, they're super cheap, like twenty bucks. Uh, and those are the knives that I like super beat on, right? Like I don't care what's on it or whatever. Like if I drop it, like fine. Um, and even though I have no intentions of dropping this knife because uh, it's very nice, um, it is because it's already dinged up. Like you can see here that it's got a pretty good uh, ding there, and then there's a uh, chip right here at the plunge, um, which is not too bad, but that is from the previous owner. Uh, so yeah, so I wanted to buy the knife to be able to use it as like a genuine user, like to be able to carry on days where, you know, I know I'm going to be doing, uh, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I ever do like hard work, right? I don't. Um, but if I'm going to be maybe outside uh, or, um, you know, I just... I don't really know what I'm getting at other than I wanted a more expensive user and I saw that this knife was already dinged up, which makes me not worried about getting the second or third or fifth scratch on it because it's already uh, dinged up a bit. The value's already been reduced a bit and I just thought it was super cool and it was very fitting for my collection. So I might get it um, done in purple. I might send it out to like Thai Spectrum and get something crazy done to it. 
um, something that makes it look cool, but also that I'm like not too worried about. You know, I, I'm further depreciating the value of the knife by modifying it. So I just wanted a, a, an expensive knife that I could devalue and feel comfortable with that because I really, I typically don't feel comfortable devaluing my knives over $300 because I want to be able to back out. You know, if, if I need cash or, um, if I just decide that this $900 knife isn't for me anymore, I want to be able to get most of what I paid out of it. Um, and so what this was is a deviation from that standard purchasing um, uh, style that I have. And I really wanted like a nice, really nice knife um, that I could actually beat on. So that's what this is. So the action is impeccable. Uh, it flies out like a rocket. It's got a bit of lock stick, but that's completely normal for Shiro's. Um, I don't think I've ever used a Shiro that didn't have lockstick, honestly. Uh, so I'll, I'll be able to work on that a little bit, hopefully improve that a little bit. But, I mean, the action's great. Obviously, the knife's already been broken in, so um, this is perfect. I'm really excited about this one, guys. Uh, make sure that if you want to see uh, the full video on this knife or any of my other knives, you subscribe. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Follow me on Instagram at TavarishWorks. And, of course, if you'd like to send me a lovely loaner, you can do so by emailing me at TavarishWorks at gmail.com. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.